Hey guys, so I stumbled upon this article called A Unified Theory of Horrifying Cloud Experiments and I thought it was really interesting. The article is written by Forest Brazil. I will leave the link in the description, go to the article, show him some love. So I liked what he did. He actually asked his followers to share the most horrifying things they have built in the cloud. And I wanted to go through these answers and I wanted to dissect them with you and give you my point of view on why I think these actually are horrible and horrifying and what I think pretty much uh, about them. But apparently Forrest is a cartoonist as well. I don't know, he, he seems like a really talented dude. So I'm liking this guy more and more as I'm reading this article. So let's jump together uh, to the article and then start reviewing the crimes against the cloud that some of his followers uh, shared with him. And first we have Guillermo Rauch, Rock, I'm not sure, Versal CEO. I like Versal, I love everything that they've been doing for the web development, for the cloud. So he tweeted, running a Game Boy emulator inside a serverless Lambda function and sharing states across invocations to make it multiplayer. And he called it Pokeless Versal App. Game Boy. And the first thing I'm, I wanna say is why? Like Lambda function is an awesome technology by itself. Game Boy is an awesome technology by itself. Why try to torture them? Why bring them together and just create this Frankenstein's monster. And there's so many things wrong with building it this way. First of all, let's look at the anatomy of our lambda function. There's everything outside of the handler and there's everything inside the handler. Everything inside within the handler is not shared between invocations, but everything outside, it can actually be used to share states between multiple invocations. For example, if you need to initialize a connection to a database, you have like a pool of uh, connections to a database, you don't wanna do it within the handler, you wanna do it outside of the handler. So the next invocation can actually have access to that and have access to that uh, connection that is already opened so you don't have to create a new one within the handler. So it, this is just a quick trick that you can always keep in mind uh, when building a Lambda function. So apparently what Guillermo did is he used that block that is outside of the handler to share the states across all the multiple invocations to make it multiplayer. And I really don't see a reason to do this except for fun, uh, except for, you know, pushing the limits and trying to see how far you can push a certain technology until you break it. Apparently he had fun building it, good for you. But if you think that this is the craziest case of torturing the cloud, you're in for a treat. So our second use case here, a guy on Twitter called Boiter says that he built a search engine that indexed 200 million documents running entirely in Lambda. Now, why don't you want to build a search engine in Lambda? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is long running processes, right? Lambda is limited to 15 minutes execution, to, 15, to, a, to a 15 minute invocation. And I'm thinking that when you wanna parse 200 million documents, well, you would need a little bit more time than 15 minutes. So I'd like to parse my files in a batch manner, for example. And so I think also he's using the Lambda functions to run search queries. Let's think about that for a bit. You put in a search term that would spin up a Lambda function, and the Lambda function would have to query some kind of index, database, and yeah. For queries that are really heavy on resources, I would like to get as close as possible to bare metal. And you know how Lambda is built. It's a micro virtual machine built with Firecracker. So there's a bare metal server, and then on it, there's a way to spin up uh, this micro VM. So there's already your first layer of abstraction, and then there's the Lambda environment, the Lambda engine itself, so another layer of abstraction. And I don't think your Lambda is the perfect use case because you're leaving so much on the table in terms of resources, and you're paying a lot for what you get. So if I'm running high performance computing, like I imagine a search engine would need, I would really wanna take advantage of every bit the processor can provide me. And Lambda, Lambda doesn't provide you that, because as we said, there's too many layers of abstractions, even containers. So I'll definitely try to use a, a whole cluster of EC2 instances to build my search engine rather than using Lambda function. Lambda function is great for a lot of use cases, Building search engines is not one of them. The next one is a treat. Glover from Twitter says, I wrote an Active Directory database that used Active Directory as a key value store. I was annoyed at the cost of Cosmos DB and just saw there were no costs limits on the custom attributes in Active Directory object. 
<laughs> this is... This might be a crime against the cloud, but this is art. <laughs> it reminds me of... Um, there was this guy who used DNS. You know, in DNS, you, it's basically a key value store as well. You have multiple fields, multiple types, but there's this specific TXT field type in DNS where you can pretty much put a key and then value, right? And so this guy built, used DNS as a database and he would just store stuff there and then he would query them using DNS. He would use it to fetch value. But you know who took this to the next level? It's actually AWS when they launched their D their Dyna 53.io. So they took the DNS and they connected it directly to DynamoDB. So you can use DNS to query data from DynamoDB. I'm trying to think of a real use case where I, I would want to put this into production. Maybe I want to just reduce costs. I don't want to use API gateways and load balancers just to hit my data. Maybe I just want to do a quick query across the internet, fetch data. That would work. It's just for me, I haven't seen any use case right now that would push me. Oh yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. The TXT field where you have like the record name and then the value and you get to store this JSON object here and then query it and then get the value. So as far as crimes against the cloud go, I think this is a big one. All right, let's move to the last one here. So we have Ian McKay says, you can now use pretty much CloudFormation to buy and sell US stocks. Wait, what is that? Okay, you can reward yourself on a successful CloudFront deployment by buying some GME within the same stack. Let's look at his code here. So he's creating a new resource of type stocks, orders, market order. I see, so he's creating a custom resource Property 5, symbol Amazon, notes stonks, of course, obviously, as one does. Outputs, okay, the field quantity, field value, current value. Let's, let's click on this. I want to see if there are more details on here. Okay, the resource uses Alpaca HQ API. I see. And then he creates a database schema resource. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> and this is why, folks, you don't do something just because you can. You know, this is why, specifically why Spider-Man said, Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. CloudFormation allows you to do that, but it doesn't mean that you should do it. I actually loved what the, uh, the writer here ended up concluding is, people abuse the cloud to show their love for the cloud. These examples here that we see are of people who think outside of the box, who will take the tools that these cloud providers give them and always push the envelope and, and try to make super interesting things with them sometimes, you know, just to show us how smart they are. Um, no judgment there. I love when I see this stuff like this. It, it reminds me when I started programming a long time ago and 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 you write those first, li first lines of code and compile them and run them. It's like, I can do anything I want right now. Like I have this power to create, to build. And I think that we lost that. I certainly lost that uh, along the, the line somewhere. It just became, you know, a job. I lost that amazement that being a programmer provides your software engineer and just being able to go back home and you have an idea, you can build it. This is power. And this is why I love this article and I wanted to share it with you. Again, I will share the link to the article. Oh wait, there's, there's another example. Let's look at this last example here. So Aidan says, now that reInvent 2022 is done, how are people feeling? Impressed with the releases? Underwhelmed? Wishing there was just a little less respect paid to the laws of physics? I like where this is going. If it's the latter, I've got you covered with VPC DeLorean. All right, now you've got my interest, mister. And so the VPC DeLorean here is basically a tool that accelerates your pockets to 88 miles per hour. So instead of this snooze fest, so here basically what he's doing, he's doing pink, dark brown, sending packets, and it takes like a one milliseconds, a couple of milliseconds to receive the response. And, and those of you who are not familiar with the ping command, it's just uh, a command that allows you to check if a host uh, is up uh, on the internet. So you do ping and then the address of the host or the domain name, and it just sends packets and then listens for the response. So here it's sending six packets, six, and then getting the response. But apparently one milliseconds is too slow 
um, for Aiden. So what he did, you got responses to your pink packets before you even sent them. Okay, pink. It's, oh my god, this guy. <laughs> Time of the day goes back. Okay. <laughs> Five packet transmitted, five received, zero percent packet lost, and it all took, and it all like traveled back in time. Yeah, and this is an example of when software engineers build stuff just to show you how they're smart. Um, again, I say this with all the love. Uh, I, 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 no judgments. I love it. This is this. You know, software engineering is fun. It's supposed to be fun. We're fun people, right? We sometimes we have these like nerdy jokes and whatever, and this is. A nerdy joke. I love it. Can't get enough of this. Let's look at this cartoon. We have someone who's talking to a client, customer, and he's saying, nowhere in your terms of services does it say I can't use the randomness of rate limit exceeded. Errors I get from pulling your APIs to seed UUIDs for the game engine I'm building on top of Azure Active Directory. Okay, <laughs> this is a next level. You make a call, you exceed the rate API, the, you, you start getting errors. Those errors have a reference ID. This guy is using those reference IDs to create a unique identifiers for his game engine. I love this. Why? Yes, I would like to speak with my, with my account manager. All right, thank you guys for watching. I just, I love this one. I wanted to share it with you. I will share the link of the article go there show him some love and if you like the video as always give it a like and see you guys in the next one thank you